Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of my Pan Those Eyeshadows Project Pan. Y'all, I love this project. I think it is so fun. I love to see myself work through my collection. If you're new to my channel or haven't heard of Pan Those Eyeshadows, essentially I randomize eyeshadows from my giant collection of eyeshadow palettes and my goal is ultimately to hit pan. I just like to see a little bit of use in my collection so I am allowed to roll things out after 20 uses or if I'm just not feeling it. I don't want to make this project too strict on myself. I like to have fun, I like to keep it fresh, so let's go ahead and jump right into today's progress. I actually filmed today's look. It should be going up tomorrow if you're watching this today. On the first, I just used the Nomad. This is the Ghost Town palette, their Halloween palette for 2023. It is such a pretty palette and I've had fun with it so far. So if you want to see how I created this look, I did an entire three looks video, which should be going up tomorrow. Now, before we jump into the progress itself, I do have two bonus pans to share. So the first bonus pan I have comes from my Beauty Bay Retro Love palette. And the shade that I hit pan on is Chapel of Love which is this matte white up in the corner. I, there you go, you can see the pan. It's white and it's reflective. So hopefully you guys can see it okay. The Beauty Bay palettes are super, super shallow. I don't know if you can tell, but I don't think it took me very long to hit pan on this. I feel like maybe a handful of uses. It was super easy to work out in my everyday use. I just used it as a lid setting shade, setting my eye primer, my concealer, whatever I was using underneath my eyeshadow. And that is how I hit a nice pan in this one. And the second bonus pan I hit comes from my unofficial pan that palette, my ABH Soft Glam. This is one of the older palettes in my collection and I'm trying to hit pan on all the shades unofficially, but I did hit pan in Noir, which is this black shade right in the corner. I use this primarily as a eyeliner. I would do a faux eyeliner, or if I did a big dramatic liner like today, I would take a smudger brush and just smudge it to buff out the edges and make it a little softer. But I did hit pan in Noir, which is a black shade. I'm very proud of that. I'm gonna scooch over, and now we're gonna get on with our regularly scheduled panels eyeshadows update. So first up, we have my ColourPop and Dallas Mavericks palette. This is one of the shades I think we've been working on since the beginning of the project this year. We've been working on Run and Gun, which is this very Timberwolfy gray shade up in the corner. It is a nice matte. I used Run and Gun 12 times since last update for a grand total of 18 uses in the project. And you can see it is starting to look a little loved. I only have two more uses on this before I can roll it out, but I am going to try and hit pan on it. These bigger ColourPop pans aren't very deep either, so I don't feel like it would take me too much longer to hit pan. I'm gonna keep at it. We're just gonna keep going and see where we get to. Ironically enough, I have not done too many all gray looks. I think I combined it maybe once with my Jeffree Star cremated palette to create an all gray look. But for the most part, all the uses I have on this have been me just subtly sneaking it in to maybe a blue look or maybe a purple look just to try and add a little bit of depth. It doesn't really do much because it is not very dark, but that is how I've been using it, is just trying to sneak it into other looks where I can because I don't really use this on its own, but I am happy with how this shade is looking. I think it's looking a lot more loved than it was last update. The next palette I'm gonna talk about is another ColourPop palette. This is the ColourPop and Powerpuff Girls palette, and the shade we've been working on out of this palette is Pokey Oaks, which is this nice kind of mid-tone, ready brown, pink shade. It's, I don't even know how you describe it. It's kind of like a, like a very light rusty red, if that makes sense. I used Pokey Oaks 11 times since last update for a grand total of 12 uses in the project. And we aren't looking too different. At best, we're looking like the embossed flower on the top of the pan is starting to look a little blurred, but we're not seeing any significant dips, any significant progress. I feel like this is going to be one that I hit the 20 uses and roll it out but here is what we are looking like. I use this primarily as a crease shade. I would do a warm neutral looks and then I would pop this in with a fluffy blending brush just in the crease to add a little bit more pink, a little bit more warmth. I also did a couple pink and red looks and snuck it in that way. It wasn't the most exciting shade to use. Honestly, I'm not really feeling it anymore. I know I said that I was going to wait until 20 uses, but I think I'm going to make the executive decision to roll this one out because I don't want to make this project feel like a chore. I wanna work on shades 
shades that excite me and I feel like I've used this enough that I'm happy with the use on it and I'm ready to try something new. I'm making some impulsive decisions here. The next palette is one of my favorite collabs, Hollow Bean in collaboration with Batty Bean and Shroud Cosmetics. That was a lot of words I had to try and get right in one go. But the shade we've been working on out of this palette is Woodsboro, which is this really pretty bright orange shimmer. It is the most stunning orange I have ever had in my entire collection. I've panned several orange shades, and this has been by far my favorite orange to work on. I used Woodsboro two times for a grand total of four uses in the project, so not an insane amount of use, but you can tell that I have used it a little bit. I do remember using this one as a lower lash line shade, and I believe I also did a look where it was yellow to orange to red, and if that is the case, which I'm pretty sure that was since last update, I did use this in that look as well, just as the orange shimmer just a little bit. I love working on this. I think it's so fun. I think it's so pretty, but I do find myself having a little bit of an aversion to working on this palette. Not that I hate the palette. It's a really good palette, but in my mind, it's just not one that I want to be working on in this particular project right now. So I do think I'm going to roll this one out as well. This one is not as impulsive as the last one. I have been thinking about this one because I only have four uses in two months. I just know that it's not a shade that I'm naturally reaching for as much as the other shades in the project and for that reason I do want to roll it out and replace it with something new but that will be our last rollout for the update I pinky promise. Next we're getting into the shades that we rolled in at last update so first up we have the Sea Talk palette from Odin's Eye and Lauren May Beauty and the shade we've been working on is Driftwood which is this matte brown right at the bottom here. It's just a nice matte deeper brown. I have used Driftwood 10 times since my last update for a grand total of 10 uses in the project and I don't feel like you see a huge difference. Odin's Eye shadows, the shimmers, very easy to work through. The mattes, not so much. It is a very pigmented shadow. I don't use a lot when I use it, and most of the times I've used this shadow, I've combined it with my ABH Sultry palette. No, Soft Glam. ABH Soft Glam palette, just to deepen up some looks. I, like I said, have been using that as an unofficial pan nut palette, and this shade has come in clutch several times to deepen up those looks. I've pretty much just used it in neutral looks. I've done a lot of warm neutral looks recently. Now that we're starting to gear towards fall, I've really been feeling warm neutrals again, but hopefully we have some more progress by next update. I know that this is not the most exciting update, but we do have 10 uses on it and that's pretty good. Next, we're gonna talk about my ColourPop Misunderstood palette and the shade that we rolled in at last update is Diablo, which is this green shimmer right here. I used Diablo three times since last update for a grand total of three uses in the project. Diablo is pretty straightforward. Every time I've used it, I've pretty much used it with my Melt Gemini palette. I feel like it is right along the alley of those shades. It goes perfectly as a topper. I have been working on a yellow shimmer in my E to Z project pan, so I feel like I've combined that yellow with this green shimmer a couple times just to brighten it up. But for the most part, I feel like I've just been using this as, yeah, pretty much every use I've gotten on this one has been a lid shade. I've just popped it on the lid. Sometimes I've mixed it with shimmer, sometimes I haven't. So three uses on this one. We're gonna keep working on it, but that is Diablo. And last but not least, we are talking about my ColourPop All Hollows Eve palette. This is the Hocus Pocus 2 palette. And the shade that I rolled in a couple updates ago was Cursed, which is this lime green matte right here. I used Cursed eight times since last update for a grand total of 11 uses in the project. And we are starting to look a little more loved. It'll be hard to tell because this packaging matches the shade almost perfectly. It's very reflective but I've used Cursed primarily as an inner corner shade of all things. So I will pop it right in the inner corner if I'm doing an all green look. I've also found myself doing warm neutral looks and popping a little bit of green on the inner corner. Just yesterday, I found myself doing a warm neutral crease and popping Cursed right in the inner corner for a nice pop of green. So I just use it as a pop of green or to tie in with all green looks. Really not much to report home on this one, but I have loved doing all the green looks. I think they're so fun. I do have some more uses on this shade. I do want to continue to work on it. I have found it so fun to try and find creative ways to incorporate this into some of my looks. And now that we're heading into spooky season, you know I'm going to want to do some nice spooky looks. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and keep cursed in the project. So rolling out these two palettes and that means we have two shades to roll in. Before we do that, I just wanted to update you all on my pan percentage. Since the last time I updated my spreadsheet, I have received a few palettes in PR and I've also decluttered a few palettes. So I haven't run the exact numbers of my spreadsheet currently, but when I did last, I think maybe a month ago, I came out to 1.52% as my pan percentage. I think my ultimate goal by the end of the year will be to hit like 2%. I don't know how many pans that is to hit 2%, maybe 2.5% will be my stretch goal. I am going to try and see how high I can get that percentage number though. I haven't voluntarily been buying a ton of eyeshadow, but I have been fortunate enough to receive quite a few palettes in PR this year. So. I'm going to go ahead and stop rambling and we are going to just go ahead and generate my two shades. I am going to lean down because my laptop is charging on the floor, but I will report back with what we pick. All right, believe it or not, both the shades we rolled in are from my singles collection. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to get a little bit more use out of some of my single palettes and single shadows. The first shade I rolled in is Star Creek, which comes from my Jeffree Star Nine Pan Singles, the green palette. I do have quite a few of these little single palettes full of different color stories. This one happens to be green and blue. Star Creek is this shifty green shade right in the middle and the bottom swatch on my arm. I feel like that would go so pretty with the other greens we have in my project currently. So I do feel like we're going to be doing a lot more green looks in September. I'm not mad. I love green eyeshadow on myself. I think it looks so good. And the second shade we rolled in is actually a super shock shadow and this is the shade DG. AF, which stands for a phrase I cannot say on YouTube without getting demonetized, but this is what that looks like. It is just a nice brown. It almost looks like a satin. It's not quite a full shimmer, but it's just a nice coppery satin shade. I cannot, I have no depth perception. There we go. I feel like that shade is the shimmery version of Driftwood up there. So not a bad color story that we have going on. It's very, very earth tones, very deserty. I'm excited about that. And I am also very excited about having a super shock shadow because I have hit a pan on quite a few of these and some of their super shock cheek products. And they are some of the easiest shades to hit pan on. So I feel like we will have a sure pan for next update. Well, that is all for today's video, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you all in the next one. Bye friends. <laughs>